How's it going everyone? Sephir here and welcome back to another Tower of Fantasy video. This is going to be a day two guide. We're going to talk about everything you need to know to avoid mistakes and a lot of other information that will be good even beyond day two. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So the first thing that you should do on day two is go ahead and do your main story. And this is also where you have an option. As you can see on the top right of my screen, my main story is not yet complete, but I am capped out for the day at level 24 with max experience. I can't go any further than that. So what I'm actually doing is I'm saving the rest of my main story for tomorrow when the level cap will increase to 27, and that's going to allow me to get ahead a little bit faster. Uh, you can choose not to do that. That's perfectly okay, because right now in the early levels, we're getting so much XP that that it's not too big of a deal for the main story. So you can kind of keep that and bank it, or you can just go ahead and use all the main story completely up to you. And that's gonna just be dependent upon your play style and what you wanna do. There are gonna be a few things coming up things of note that are very important tomorrow is going to unlock the bygone phantasm at level 26 it unlocks so that is the ascendant leaderboard like the tower that you climb so the stronger you are going into this the better you are going to do so if you can get some more pulls on the map that could be a strategy that you could go uh, i know we talked about saving supply pods for experience before you can definitely do that but you can also invest heavily in opening those and always make up that experience later by opening small chests if you really want to push the bygone phantasm leaderboard but just keep in mind that that's going to be a bit of RNG because some people rolled copies of Samir and King and they're going to just have better weapons than you just straight up so it's going to be hard so you might want to wait till tomorrow when Bygone Phantasm unlocks check your bracket because how it works is it'll put people in random brackets and you can see if there's any like guys with some crazy weapons or something like that and then determine how difficult you want to go on this like do you really want to farm out all those rolls and prepare and try to push up or are you just going to coast in like an easy like top 50 spot and uh, collect those rewards towards the end of the week it's just kind of up you and you can like up to you and you can just kind of gauge where you're at with that so with that out of the way i do want to put out a warning big big warning here be careful with crew missions if you take a look at my menu here I actually made a mistake and I forgot about this. I knew this coming from the beta, but I forgot. I actually was just so tired yesterday from streaming. I hit these two buttons. I selected these two quests. You can't get rid of them. And the wormhole and the void rift won't unlock until like level 35 or 41. And everything is going to reset in the crew on Monday at 5 a.m. So we are not going to be that high a level. We're only going to be like level... 31 or something like that and it's not going to be up there you can't reach these two so do not take any quests if you haven't already from the crew for wormhole or void rift that's not going to be good you can take the bygone phantasm but as you can see i can't take it here because i already completed one and these two are locked on me over here and you there's no way to drop these quests right you can't get rid of them you can't abandon them or anything so i'm missing out on 500 crew points and also merits towards my guild which is unfortunate uh, but just be careful be aware of that uh, this won't be a problem going into the future because we will have higher levels but this is a week one problem so just just beyond that and of course you know make sure you hit your daily donation for the crew and that will definitely help out and go a long way all right, so the next thing that is very important is going to be about Vitality. Today, Vitality is going to unlock for you. If you see in the top right of my screen, you can see that I've already used my Vitality, and I'm going to talk about how to use that Vitality, what's going to get you the most value on day two. So the best thing that you can do on day two... You're going to have three options once you level up. I believe Dimensional Trials unlocks at level 23. But if you're doing the main story and you did your bounties, which is the first two things you should do every day, main story bounties, then you should be right around that level 23. Or, or maybe really close to that. If you're not, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You can get it from doing some of this other stuff. So the first thing you should do is you should spend your vitality on the interstellar exploration, but you should only spend it on certain gates. So as you can see on the map here, 
I have a few gates available. There are only four because I have completed two of them. The two of them that I completed had rewards for purple weapon materials. As you can see, these are having rewards for blue weapon materials. You do not want to do this. They also give you a large chunk of XP, like 20,000, which is pretty much half of a level. So that will definitely get you up to that level 23 if you're not already. But there's going to be two of them you're going to want to do. They're going to appear on the map. Uh, one of them should be in Astra and the other should be in Bengis and I believe it spawns next to this teleport and then the other one was like down low here. Uh, but just go ahead and check your map. You're going to see where those two uh, star rifts are going to be, the stargates, and you're going to want to do those two that give the purple weapon materials. Once you've done two of those, that's going to be 60 of your 180 total vitality because you should be full capped then you are going to want to do Dimensional Trials. Dimensional Trials will give you two purple weapon boxes of your choice, as well as two blue weapon boxes. So that makes it the next best thing, aside from those purple rarity stargates. So once you've done that, you're going to expend all your resin, every single bit of your resin. So you're going to be down to whatever this amount is. Once you've done that, you can consider doing Joint Operation just for the credit of doing it, you're going to get credit in your adventurer's journal. But I would not spend any of your vitality to open any boxes inside of this joint operation because the only rewards you're going to get is low level matrix right now. It's a waste of vitality. You should be aiming for weapon augment materials and things to upgrade your stuff, right? So if you do this, you can, how it works is you can go inside, you can fight it all out, you can help your teammates. But if you don't have enough vitality to open the box, you will get support points instead, which will go towards your support point store, and you can purchase other good stuff that you need. But the other thing is, even if you do have vitality, you just simply do not open the box. You don't touch the box. You don't choose to open it. And it will have a prompt that will say yes or no. You can just click no, and then you're good to go. You don't have to worry about that. All right, so that's going to cover vitality management. You should spend all of that out and try to keep your vitality close to recovering around the time when you think you're going to play again. You want to ideally be max vitality when you think you're going to log in and play again for the next day. So if you click up here in the top, it'll show you when this fully recovers. So for me right now, it's 21 hours from now and that uh, almost 22 hours. And that's pretty comfortable for me because I feel like by the time I've done all my stuff for the day and I wake up at this exact time, I'm going to have a full boatload of vitality here. And if it's not, if it's not going to line up with your schedule, just go ahead and uh, wait till later on in the day and use another 30 and if you do use another 30 make sure you use it on that dimensional trials because that's going to be your best thing on day two this is going to change in the future so just be aware it will change in the future but for now this is all we have unlocked so it's going to be your best thing to do Okay, the next thing we're going to jump into is going to be Robarg and the boss quest. There is a boss quest, and this might be something you could consider doing on day two. You should be strong enough now that you are equal level to Robarg or even a little bit higher. So you can grab some of your friends and you can head out to this teleport in Astra. And you're going to head towards the bottom. There is a world boss here, and you can kill it and use one of your gold chips if you want to try to get stuff, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend saving your gold chips, as you can see the boss being down there. And you will, once you defeat that, you can open that up with or without a forced cipher. We're talking about those keys that you get from the bounty missions. Uh, so you can or cannot use that. That's completely up to you. And once you do go to this teleport, there is a quest. There is a quest to kill Robarg. You're going to head over here to this NPC and it's going to be called Rochelle. You're going to talk to Rochelle and she will give you a quest to do that. The quest rewards you some weapon augment materials as well as some XP. So if that's something you want to cash in right now, you can. Or you can take the quest, complete it, and then just wait till later. Option's going to be up to you. The next thing we have is training. Make sure you are doing your training for the day. And this is, you know, it's going to be the same every day. Do your training. But today is going to be a little bit different because we're going to have options to do other types of training. And some will be locked by the level. So some of these trainings in Crown are locked for level 33. But the ones you can do will be the Bangies and Astra trainings. You want to make sure you do either Astra Battle Training 2 or Bangies Battle Training 2. They both give the same 
point reward amount as you can see on the bottom of the screen here so either way you're going to be okay with that and then this one oh man this one is hard this is the astra coordination training you're going to push this giant ball down a hill and it's going to hit these like ping pong things like it's in a pinball machine and you have to hope that it goes into there you're going to get 100 points for each ball that you score in the ring down at the bottom it's kind of rng but the best thing i can see say is like on this left side try to hit these left or right bumpers on the very edge if you hit that at a slow velocity then it will likely fall into that ring but good luck on that i only got 200 points myself if you guys get 300 points let me know comment down below how'd you do on this one it can be a little bit tricky some of these are are really sneaky here uh, so that's going to be it for the training. And then we also have a, just a general reminder. Make sure you go to the black market uh, waypoint to get your uh, gift reward from Hopkins. Make sure you're going to that. So right here, black market waypoint. And then also if you have Cetus Island unlocked doing this little uh, hop, skip, and a jump. If you watched my stream yesterday, you'll see that I hopped up here and got to see this island. You should be able to get the claw machine and get access to that as well. So you will get three more gifts from the claw machine in the back of Cetus Island. So I'll go ahead and show you where that is just in case. But if you don't know how to get up here, the best way would be to get somebody that had already done the jump to teleport you up. They can do that by inviting to a group and then calling you to the area. But if that's not an option for you, if you have to do it yourself, the way you can get up here is through these little side cables. You're going to see all around the map. If we go down here and sort of look, you see these little cable right there. You can hop up there and then you can attach on the side. It requires a lot of jump mechanics. You have to utilize the wall hop uh, glitch. And it's, it's a little rough, but if you can get up here, then it's good. If not, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, but basically, you would just go and do your claw machine in the back, which would be all the way to the f uh, back beyond this tent next to the NPC Slayer. And Slayer is going to be the standing right uh, behind the claw machine. So you'll go right here, and then you should get three attempts on this little claw machine device. So once we have done that, I do have a quick update on Mia's Kitchen. So Mia's Kitchen is behaving a little bit differently than it was in the closed beta. In the closed beta, it would bank over to the next day. What happened right now was that I had two out of three Mia's Kitchen and I was timing it to where the third one would be arriving when I woke up. But it looks like it just cashed them all in for me. So what you need to do every day is make sure that you turn in all three of your Mia's Kitchens before you log out and go to sleep for the day. So this is going to be at 5 a.m., 12 p.m., or 12, yeah, 12 p.m., noon, and then 6 p.m. So once 6 p.m. happens, you'll have all three of these. So just log in, you know, sometime after 6 and cash them all in. You just click on them and it's good to go. All right, once you have done all of that for day two, the next thing you should be working on is, once again, gathering these waypoints. As you can see, my map is lit up. I have all the waypoints in the area that I need to be in. And you can even dive into crown and get some of those crown waypoints. You might have a high enough suppressor now to survive, but that's kind of be up to you. So doing that, collecting things that are like the scenic points is a good idea. Uh, for map progress so that you can collect some of these rewards like these mushrooms so if you start making progress towards that just be careful opening supply pods because they do give xp but if you want to go for it and you don't mind grinding the extra chest later feel free go ham uh, you can kind of explore and get on that point so that's going to be your good go-to for that. There are a couple of runes that will also be available. I'm going to have several runes guide coming out today because there are some that are tricky. So that's going to be the start of my runes guide series. I'm going to cover every single runes and show you how to do them, where all the chests are, how to solve all the puzzles, everything like that. So look forward towards that. And then once you have finally done that, you can start farming mount parts if you want, or the SSR relic quests. I will cover a little bit of that later in some other videos, but there are certain world bosses in the game where they drop mount parts. You can find that out by going to your vehicle, and then you can, or sorry, and go to your inventory, and you can kind of, uh, oh no, it is a vehicle. That's right. You can go here, and then you can see any vehicle that you don't have. You can see where a part would come from, and here we would just click on it. It's going to tell me information 
information, it's going to say, oh, it's a low drop rate from the Vermin Brothers. So you know where the Vermin Brothers are on the map, and you go and find them. If you don't know where they are, I would suggest using a map resource. You can look for elite min enemies and monsters, and you can easily just find where they are. But they should be pretty recognizable. And you just kill them over and over until hopefully you get this mount piece. So that is something you could do. And then, of course, farming achievement points is always going to be good. I've made, I've started making progress on my achievement points. You can see here I got 50 mushrooms, working towards 100 mushrooms. I collected 100 wheat and lettuce already. So you're trying to get this right here is what you're trying to do. You're going to get overall points, which is also going to give you dark crystals along the way, which you can use on nemesis rolls and other rolls. But more importantly, you're going to get this, which will give you five standard banded rolls, five matrix rolls, and a mushroom that will increase your stamina bar so that you can swim longer, climb longer, and also use your move that drain stamina from your characters okay that's going to be pretty much everything i can think of for day two that's going to be the important stuff also make sure to cap out your support points by helping other players once your vitality is depleted you can do that through world bosses or like i said the join op by not uh by doing it when you don't have any vitality so that's also going to be nice but that'll pretty much cover you for day two of course we're going to have a day three guide coming out tomorrow so look forward to that and like i said keep an eye out for those ruins guides let me know in the comments down below what do you guys want to see in terms of guides is there anything you want to know what do you really want let me let me know on that uh, comment down below and i will reply to that all right that's gonna be it for this video make sure to like subscribe and hit the bell if any of this information helped you out at all whatsoever it definitely goes a long way and that's gonna be it for this one we will catch you in the next video